Welcome to Freedom Cast. This podcast was started by a dude buying and selling fitness equipment in his backyard. In less than a year, I quit my Fortune 100 job and started a fitness empire. I now interview business owners who have built businesses around helping others get healthy and active. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's informative. It's what fitness should be. Freedom Cast is brought to you by Freedom Fitness Equipment in Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's get rolling. Sweet. So, so yeah, so that's the gym. Um, it's awesome. been a, a long work in progress, but that's what I've, I've got going on. So I see you've got quite a few barbells back there yourself. We do. Yeah, we've got our home gym set up. Unfortunately, we're not in a garage. We're in a sunroom, so everything's glass. I had to build my own A-frame to even put this up here. Okay. Uh, it works. Uh, it just takes up a lot of room. There's a um, body solid uh, rack that you can actually store freestanding. That's you can sit further back. I'll probably get that eventually, but okay. it holds like 12 bars more than I'll ever need. I use the Kabuki strength power bar more than oh, any nice. other bar. And it's phenomenal. Um, yeah. I don't know what your favorite bar is, but like, I'm a huge fan of the volcano knurling or the, like the, the, I haven't, I've, I've touched the rogue Ohio power bar. I have not used it, but I love the feel of it. Okay. I just, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the aggressive stuff just because it sticks to your hands so well. So is the Kabuki, is it a, is it a mountain neural? Is it a volcano neural? It's actually a volcano neural. Yeah. Or at least that's what they claim. Um, and the, the, it's really comfortable. Uh, it doesn't shred. I know the elite FTS power bar is, is, is mountainous. So it's basically sticking right up into your hand. This guy yeah. is, you know, they got whatever the head's chopped off or, you know, dipped into. So it's, yep. it's much more, there's, there's more surface area and it's just, it feels great. I mean, especially on deadlifts, it feels great. Yeah. I've got the, the rep stainless steel power bar EX as well, which okay. is a pure mountaintop. It's super sharp. Nice. So, um, I don't know. I think it's relatively close to the Kabuki, um, but probably a little bit sharper. Okay. Um, I can't use it as a regular everyday, but, and I train six days a week and I've got some decent calluses. Yeah. I, it's, it's too aggressive for me. Oh, so wow. I get that question a lot. So I, I defaulted back to their standard V2 power bar with a, with the volcano neural on it. It's not okay. quite as, and I've been trying to, I've been doing some experiments with neural lately in that I think that on the, on the rogue bars, they feel kind of sharp and, mm -hmm. and, uh, my, my technical term is pokey, but, uh, they, uh, you know, they feel sharp and they feel more aggressive, but I don't know that they give you more grip than this rep, than this rep volcano neural. Uh -huh. Um, and the rep, uh, you know, if you slide your hand across the top of it, it's, it's smoother. Okay. But when you grip it, it like, it really, it, it's got some great grip. It sticks in your hand. So, um, I actually really, I've grown to love when I first took it out of the, out of the box, I was like, ah, this is a little passive for me. But when I actually used it, um, I actually, I like it. I'm, I'm not a big, I find I'm one of the few home gym folks out there. I'm not a huge rogue fan. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I saw the comments on your page about um, rogue being overpriced and overhyped and I'm totally on the same page. I think you can get uh, what Titan has done to their quality control is what most people are doing now. And right. They've perfected, I mean, the X3 rack, which I'm sitting in front of right now, okay, awesome. is more than anybody ever needs. I mean, yeah. you've got like 6,000 attachments you can put on it without right. touching the price point that Rogue is at. So I, I'm totally on the same. They're a great company. Don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah. and they sponsor CrossFit, but that, that's the reason why they're so pricey. Yeah. When I built my gym, I honestly thought I was going to, you know, have a, a, there's a particular couple of events in my life that made me build an actual gym in my in my garage even though i've played with working out at home over my whole life mm -hmm. um and when i first started doing research i really thought i was going to end up with an all rogue gym i mean I, I thought i was going to end up with a rogue rack and an ohio power bar and and rogue plates and i, I was really i was excited about it i knew it was going to cost more but um one of the things that i i made an effort to do was i actually went out and i paid for day passes at crossfit boxes and i paid for oh. day passes at other gyms and i went you know, and, and beg, borrowed and steal. Hey, can I, if I knew somebody had a home gym, right? I've got a few folks that work for me that do CrossFit. I'm like, Hey, can I, I know you've got this bar, or you've got this bench. Can I come try it? That's one of the tough things I think for people is with fitness gear, there's very few places you can go put your hands on a bar before you try it, you know, yeah. or put, you know, try a rack. You kind of have to take 
the folks on, on mine's word for it. And so I, I went into the whole thing. I'm like, well, I'm going to end up with all rogue stuff. And then as I went and tried it all, I just, and I was totally open to buying rogue. I mean, I have nothing, they make awesome stuff. Yeah. You know, and I, you yeah. know, a while back I, I drove a sports car and I drove a lifted truck for a while. And I, I kind of compare it to buying those types of cars. They're great. <laughs> Yeah. They, you know, I had a lot of fun with them. I have nothing bad to say about them, but right now I drive a hybrid and it yep. gets me to work and back and it gets great mileage and I didn't have to spend as much money on it. Yep. And when I looked at the gym equipment, every piece that I looked at, there was something as good or better than Rogue at a lower price, especially for what I wanted to use it for. And it wasn't that the Rogue wasn't great stuff. It was every time I use it, I'm like, man, this stuff is nice. The finish is beautiful. The you know, the little details are, are just awesome. I love the color. You know, I loved all the stuff that they made. Not a big fan of their barbells for other reasons. Some of the design choices they make in their barbells, I didn't necessarily like, but mm -hmm. that's not, you know, that's just personal preference. That's not good or bad. But man, when I went and tried stuff, you know, the benches are a great example. This AB5200 bench is is phenomenal. I started off with the AB3000 from Rep and, and those benches are hundreds less than the Rogue benches. Yeah. And they are as good or in, in some cases better than the Rogue benches. And it's like, yeah, it doesn't say Rogue on the side, but I just, I can't bring myself to spend the extra money on the Rogue stuff. And then when you look at their marketing budget and, you know, I, I've got, you know, I, I could get on my soapbox about why I thought <laughs> I was going to get a Rogue gym to start with just because of how the the online home gym marketplace is kind of set up mm -hmm. and it's just, it's just, they have, they have, you know, just call a spade a spade. They have a better affiliate program than anybody else out there. Probably. So yeah. When you Google what's the best power rack, the first 50 results are, you know, here's the best power racks. And it was basically a, an itemized list of all the rogue racks. Wow. Because if you, bought one of those rogue racks that particular website made more money than if you went and bought a titan rack or went and bought a rep rack or anything like that so it was yeah. like you get this skewed view of well i guess rogue really is the best and it's and really it's while they are great they also have a bigger marketing budget than everybody else and you know they pay their affiliates more than anybody else and you know i probably lose income because i don't recommend rogue in a lot of instances and, and I could and it's an easier you know it's pushing the rock downhill instead of uphill mm -hmm. so but it's just you know I don't know that it's necessarily the right recommendation so but what uh, speaking of affiliate programs like uh, what are the payouts on those things anyway if you don't mind talking numbers I mean uh, do you have a range uh, is it like five and ten percent are you talking like pennies yeah it depends on the it depends on the product and it depends on you know different people will have different deals so you know, for example, you can you can work out a deal with a company where you get eight percent or twelve percent of the price of the product, nice. or you can work out where you've got an exclusive coupon code, which I'm sure you've seen. Hey, go there and enter the code Jim Crafter ten or whatever, and that reduces your percentage, but it increases your conversion. Okay. So more people will go and use a coupon code because they're spending money than will just click and buy at the listed price, but happen to go through your link. Um, so there's, there's a, a wide variety of stuff and, you know, you've got your low point, which is Amazon is sometimes as low as 1%. Ooh. Um, and then you've got your high point with rogue, which is, which is, you know, eight, 10, and sometimes more. Wow. Um, That's and crazy. then you've got everybody else who's somewhere in, somewhere in between. Okay. Yep. Um, so, but, uh, you know, I think that's, that was one of the frustrating things for me when I was building my gym is, is people wrote you know, when you, when you Google what's the best bar or what's the best weights or what's the best, you know, whatever, A, nobody had actually used any of those products, Yeah, right? It's, it's all this list of, well, the people on it's Amazon- It's a top 10, yeah. It's, it's, you know, so there, you haven't actually used them. And number two, it was, here's the 10 things that pay me the most. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't here's the 10 things I think are the best. And, and you know, for me, there aren't 10 best things that, that frustrated me so much. It's like, there's no 10 best bumper plates. You know, there's one or two that are the, that, you know, or, or here's why they're the best for you or for different purposes. And right. You no, know, that, that was the whole impetus for starting the site, to be honest with you, was my frustration that the difference I found in the online content versus um, what I found in real life by going and actually using the equipment, you know, and, mm -hmm. You know, even the folks who do actual reviews, a lot of them, 
you know, everybody watches Coop. Everybody watches Brandon, you know, at, at the uh, Garage Gym Lab. He's really doing an awesome job. But as cool as those sites are, it's like, hey, I got this last week. I tried it a couple of times. Here's what I think. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, great. How did it last over a year? Mm -hmm. Did it hold up to working on it every day? You know, how did it, what are the little things that you find out about a product that you don't really learn unless you use them on a daily basis? So that was a, that was an area that I really thought was missing. And that, that was the whole impetus behind starting Gym Crafter. And that's, that's why you don't see on my site, the 10 best this or the 10 best that, or here's a review of something that I just got sent as a sample or yeah. you know, there's just, there isn't any of that stuff. So yeah. It was, uh, it was a little frustrating at first. So I'll, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> no, you're fine. I was talking with a, a, a morning lifter. Um, uh, now I'm going to forget his first name and that is horrible. Um, but anyway, so he, he does, he's actually starting to do more of the used gym equipment reviews now, which I'm a big fan of because I run a used gym equipment company. So it's like, I have not seen people do that before. Um, but yeah, to your point, like he would try stuff out for, you know, months before he would even touch the review. And with some of these people, like you've got to get an initial impression, like right. Coop and Adam and Brandon, they do, they do try it out for a little bit. And I, I must say Coop's done a better job of this. Like he recently did like a two year review of the rogue echo bike, but that stuff doesn't come up very often. Right. And like the reliability and the longevity of, the, of this equipment needs to be retested. Same thing with, I mean, same thing with anything, you know, Amazon basic squat rack or um, like a fitness gear barbell. If people showed what the one to two year lifespan was on those things, fitness gear is going to bend in half, buddy. Right. I mean, I don't care where you are and what right. you're doing. Like, so um, yeah, you're right. Like there needs to be some follow-up with this kind of stuff. Cause you know, if you have, that's really interesting. I did not know that about the affiliate program. That makes so much more sense. Um because you're going to, of course, you're going to see that more. That's where the money's going. That's why I liked, um, that's why I liked you and Morning Lift. I, 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 and I'm trying to compile like a top garage gym review site mm -hmm. list because a lot of these are spam blogs, it seems, or, or, or uh, lists of things that somebody put together almost as a, like a, like a forced backlink into the website. Mm -hmm. just to show them off. And I, I'm wondering for some of these, if they're not created by rope, <laughs> to be frank, oh, um, sure. yeah. you know, but that's, Oh, but, uh, by the way, sorry, before I get distracted again, um, I'm looking at the curl bar that you have behind you. Is that an ISF curl bar? It is not. So that is a uh, fringe sport, uh, oh, nice. okay. curl bar. So gotcha. that was, that was something that it was something that I used. We have a great gym where I work. I mean, a really, really solid gym where I work. All hammer strength stuff. It's a it's a large company of sixteen hundred people. So we've got a, you know, a steam showers and racquetball courts. It's a fantastic gym. And so I used the, I used the curl bar a lot there. So when I built my gym here, I'm like, ah, oh, I should have a curl bar. Yeah. But then I, you know, then I hired a, a a coach, which is a whole other story we can get into if you want. But sure, um, I, we don't use the curl bar. So just okay, wow not something that we use. And so it, it sits there, um, you know, and, and honestly, it, I may replace it with the rep rackable curl bar. Okay. Just trying to load these things as you balance them on your bench. It's kind of a, you know, again, it's, it's, it's like the, the hex bar, just it, yeah. loading it as a, a chore. I probably won't do it. So it's, it's a uh, ease of use. So a rackable curl bar might be in my future. We'll see. Yeah, I've used, uh, you mentioned the curl bar and the, and the um, I've got the Titan safety squat bar. I, I've used them maybe a handful of times. The safety squat bar has more functionality, but I, uh, I found out that the, the, the way that, say the Mars bar, for example, is, is curved, actually might be a little bit more versatile. So I'm, we may end up uh, flipping that out for something else just because I prefer things, even Kabuki's transformer bar, where you can literally adjust along a full range of specialty bars would right, almost right. be better, I think, than like some of this stuff, but I'm still up in the air about that. Oh, so two things I wanna ask you. Yeah. One, you mentioned your impetus for starting a home gym, and I know you documented some of that on your site. So can you tell our listeners, or listeners a little bit about that? And then two, um, can you talk about what your training program and regimen is now as far as weightlifting yeah. is concerned? Yeah, absolutely. So 
it's a, I'll try and keep it short. It's a little bit of a long story. I've had home gym stuff my whole life, I, yeah. all the way back to when I was a I'm 50. So when I was a kid, there wasn't a lot of home gym stuff, but my parents did get me a Sears weight bench and set when I was a kid as the plastic filled with cement, um, standard, not a two inch bar or the one inch bar um, with uh, like these plastic sleeves. And honestly, that, you know, it was cool. I had it. I didn't use it a lot. And that, that, that was a story in my life for a long time. I've owned two Bowflexes in my life. Um, you know, I've made bad decisions twice. So it's, uh, but you know, I mean, anything, if you use it can, you can get results on. So I don't want to yeah. bash that too much. I'm sure people get great results on Bowflex if you actually use it. Um, but I'm the type of person where I would get real motivated for a while and then I would get unmotivated and then I get real motivated. So I never really stuck with it. I never, I, my joke was I, I don't enjoy working out, but I enjoy having worked out. Hey, there you go. So it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it was never something that really motivated me. Um, I was never motivated by aesthetics too much. I'm already, I'm six foot six. I'm already kind of a big guy. So I never really felt the need to like, oh, I need to get, you know, jacked and swole and mm -hmm. thick or whatever people say nowadays. <laughs> so, um, you know, that wasn't a, a motivation for me. So, um, I wasn't necessarily the strongest guy ever. And, and um, I should know how long ago now, but at some point I threw out four discs in my back and I had oh. two lumbar that were bulged and I had two cervical that were bulged. And Dude. I literally spent about a year on my living room floor face down because um, I couldn't walk upstairs. I could barely get up and go to the bathroom. I couldn't, you know, it was, it was an awful time in my life. And um, during that time, I, I gained a lot of weight and the weight made the back problem worse. And mm. I found a good physical therapist, which helped some, but I, I was just kind of broken down and weak. And, and uh, at some point I remember deciding, I'm like, well, you can either, you know, stay here on the couch and continue to gain weight and continue to be in pain, or you can do something about it. And, and so I've always been the let's do something about it type person, at least. So mm -hmm. I started training, uh, training at the gym at work and nothing specific. I tried a bunch of different programs, everything from crappy ones like beach body stuff to, um, you know, Vince Del Monte type stuff, which is again, more marketing than actual effectiveness. Then I got into some stuff by Jay Ferrugia, who's a great trainer, really, really well respected. Okay. He makes great stuff. And then Dr. John Russin, who I still train with yeah. today. Awesome. Um, is his stuff is amazing and really focused on on pain-free performance. Okay. And we'll get into that in a second when I talk about the training. So I did that and lost a bunch of weight and felt better. And then about three years ago, I woke up and had a headache and the headache never went away. And I spent three weeks at the Mayo Clinic, um, had all kinds of off, I've had six or seven lumbar punctures, uh, these things called epidural blood patches where they, they lay you down. <laughs> A trigger warning for people, this is awful, <laughs> but they lay you down on a table and they, they put a, a needle in your spinal column and then they take blood out of your arm and feed it directly into your spinal column until it fills up. And the wow. idea is to, to equalize your spinal, your spinal fluid pressure. So they huh. took two of those, went through all of this awful stuff. And basically um, I learned a couple of things. Number one, doctors for the most part are just guessing. Um, yeah. And then number two, they finally, they just said, Hey, you know, you have this thing called new daily persistent headache. You're just going to have a headache. Just learn to deal with it. So that put me right back on the couch, gained more weight time in front of Netflix and on the couch and eating Oreos all the time, made the back flare up again. So again, I find myself in this position. I'm like, well, you've got a choice. You can either choose to just be a typical you know, standard American diet, overweight, unhealthy person, or you can do something about it. And the idea of weight training with a headache, not something I wanted to do. No. Um, but I went in and I'm like, well, I can have my head and my back hurt, or I can just have my head hurt. Like, so let's just go for just the head. So I went in and I trained and I had, didn't realize how, just how weak I had gotten. I remember going in to set up for the bench press. I'm like, oh, I'll throw a couple of 45s on and just do a few sets of 10 and you know, work out a little bit. And I remember putting the 45s in the bar and I unracked it and I'm in the, it's on a, just a dedicated benching bench. So there's no safeties or anything oh, like that. Wow. And I unrack it and I'm like, oh crap. I re-racked it right away. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should do 115. So I took those off and put 35s on. 
the same thing happened. I'm oh like, no. Oh no. And there's a whole gym full of people. And I'm like, are you really going to lay down on a bench and bench 95 pounds? <laughs> and I could do three reps. Like that's where I started was wow. three reps at 95 pounds. And, and I remember thinking a couple of things. I'm like, I'm like, I can't, I'm like, I can't do this. This is embarrassing. It's, you know, I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. I don't like commercial gyms or gym in the first place. But um, after that workout, my headache was gone hmm. and it stayed gone for an hour. Nothing, nothing major. Wow. Like, oh, let me see if that was a fluke. So I went back and I trained the next day and I trained a little bit harder and I pushed a little bit harder and I lifted a little bit more weight and the headache was gone for a little bit longer. And I found that the resistance training, it didn't make it go away, but it gave me some relief across the day. So I'm like, well, crap, I'm going to train six, seven days a week at this point. Yeah. So that started a journey of a, I didn't want to work in the workout in, at the gym there for a variety of reasons. Um, B, because I don't like to work out, you know, the motivation to get rid of the headache was there. I'm like, let's remove all of the obstacles. Let's put the gym in the garage. I don't have to drive someplace. I don't have to change my clothes. I don't have to shower somewhere. I don't have to wait for stuff. I don't have to wipe other people's sweat down. I don't have to listen to God awful, terrible music. You know, I can just work out at home where I, I'm, I'm happier and I'm more apt to do it. Yeah. And I kept training and, and sure enough, at this point I can manage the headache. It's still there all the time, but it's, it's definitely manageable, especially on days that I train. And I'll never forget, I go back to the Mayo Clinic for a follow-up. So I go in and I sit down with the, he's the head of the, the, of the headache program at the Mayo Clinic, world-renowned headache program. Mm. Um, and I say, hey, just so you know, I cleaned up my diet, you know, took sugar out, took industrial seed oils out, nothing fancy, just mostly took all the processed foods out. Yeah. Um, and I started resistance training and I said, I can make my headache kind of go away for a few hours a day. And he looks at me and he goes, oh yeah, there's, there's lots of studies that show resistance training and diet can help your headache. And I looked at him and I just about, I was really wanted to punch him because I would too. I'm like, you put me through all of these crazy medical procedures, all, needles in my spine and three hour MRIs. And they injected radioactive isotopes into my brain. I mean, they did crazy stuff to try and figure this out. And I'm like, but you never thought to tell me, why don't you try lifting weights and cleaning up your diet first? I was just, I was furious. So, but the good news is that, you know, now I'm not overweight anymore and my back's yeah. relatively under control because of Dr. Russin and, and my headaches are manageable and all so due to home gyms. And that, that's another big reason why I started the site is, you know, I think people who train and, and your CrossFit people of the world and your power lifters of the world, they're going to train whether there's coop around or not. You know, it's, it's cool and it's fun to watch and you can geek yeah. out on it, but your average person that would really benefit from it, their doctors never told them that resistance training is good for them. You know, they look at, I showed my old roommate a picture of the garage and his response was, wow, that's intense. You know, it's, it's not something people would consider putting in their home because they just don't know the benefits of it. So yeah. You know, that that's, I'm not a huge jacked guy. I work out for other reasons. Um, but I think that that message needs to get to people who it can help where having a home gym can really improve the quality of their life. You know, my back pain, 40 pounds heavier is significantly greater than it is now with less weight and in a stronger core. So it's just, you know, I think that there's, there's a lot of benefit um, and that, that's really why I started the site is a, like I said, I didn't like the content that was out there. It didn't help me as an average person build a gym that was useful um, or within my budget. And B, you know, there wasn't anybody out there teaching me just the basics of, of home gyms. Like, okay, you can talk about what the 10 best weight plates are, but I don't even know how many plates I should buy. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, so there's some basics that people just skip right over. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, well, you should get a bar with a medium neural. What does that mean? What is neural? You know, and, and I know those are basic questions to the gym folks out there, but there's a lot of people who they don't, you know, the only thing they do is they go to, they go to Planet Fitness for 10 bucks a month and they jump on a treadmill because that's what they know. Yeah. And, and that's Easy. unfortunately not the right thing for them. So, you know, hopefully I can do a little bit of good in the world by helping, you know, if I can help one person. Yeah or alleviate their back pain or, or, or just work out more because they have a gym that they like and that they love. And that, that's, to me, that's mission accomplished.
Amen to that. So, but that's that's my long version. Of I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, you said that that uh, can you get into some details on exactly what Rusin has you doing as far as the weightlifting regimen? Yeah. So I started off by getting his FHT program, fun functional hypertrophy training. Okay. And then I got his functional power training. Um, and then somewhere in there, he's in Madison and I'm in Chicago or near Chicago. Okay. So at some point I said, let me call and see if he's available in person. Right. So I called up and, and they're like, oh yeah, he loves to see people in person. I'm like, I don't need, you know, I don't want to drive to Madison for training, but I don't know how to squat. I don't know how to deadlift. And I said, I've got a bad back and four bad discs. I should probably have somebody show me the right way to do these things. So I went up there and I spent about four hours with him and he taught me how to lift. It was wow. the, the best, some of the best money I've ever spent. He's, a, he's an amazing guy. He's super helpful. Um, and he's really focused on, on pain-free training. It's, you know, he's got me deadlifting, but only from a height at which my back can remain neutral at the bottom of the movement. Nice. Um, so I did that and I really liked him. And then two years ago, he launched um, an online training program that's still one-on-one. -on -one. And so I signed up for that and never thought I'd spend that much money on training, but um, worth, again, worth, worth every penny. And the nice thing about this is it's, it's unlike a lot of online training, which is like, here's a cookie cutter meal plan. Here's a cookie yeah. cutter program. There's no thought put into it. Um, you know, it's really tailored to, to my needs and my goals. Nice. But basically his training is based heavily in the West side barbell stuff. If you're okay, familiar cool. With that. Yeah. Conjugate. A lot of, yep. uh, undulating periodization, um, a lot of, of, uh, wave, Style, style training as far as how it, it changes week to week and, and, and month to month. Um, every month we get a, a new block, but basically, uh, and he did a great free webinar. It's on his YouTube channel. It'll go through his approach to training, mm -hmm. but basically it's, it's you start with uh, his six phase dynamic warm up. So it's a, it's a real good solid warm up. Then you go into a, a priming movement. So, you know, if you're doing squats that day, maybe you would do back, you'll do uh loaded jumps or band resisted jumps or something like that. And then you'll go to your key performance lift of the day, whether that's a squat or a deadlift or a bench or a, a pull up. Um, and we do four strength days a week and then do two, what are called energy system development days, which are kind of hit circuit kind of stuff, um, get your heart rate up type of a deal. And then do a bunch of uh, pump and accessory stuff and things that'll kind of keep your joints healthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's real, it's basic stuff. And you know, the, the rep scheme changes from week to week, but uh, it, it's really a, a powerlifting based program. And, and yeah. for me, it's designed for core strength, uh, lower back stability. Um, and the fact that I'm 50, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing overhead presses. I'm not doing, um, you know, I'm not doing, I'm not doing a bunch of, of things that will get me injured. Mm -hmm. uh because i injure easier than derrick rose it's just, <laughs> it's uh you know i make derrick rose look bulletproof it. <laughs> and it's, since i've been training with dr russ and i haven't been injured so you know there were, some, there were some back pain flare-ups that we went through at first that sure. having Those a normal one-on-one -on -one coach helps with mm -hmm. but uh I, I can't recommend you know programs or good solid quality programming enough i think that's another thing that keeps people from building a home gym is they're like, okay, well, I can get all that equipment, but they, other than remembering high school gym class, they mm -hmm. don't know what to do with it. They're like, well, I'll go in and I'll bench press every day. And then yeah. they wonder why their shoulders hurt or they've got forward shoulder or their back isn't strong or, you know, their knee hurts or whatever it happens to be. And I think there's no substitute for quality programming. Um, and, and I think it's hard, it's not hard to find, but it's, it gets lost in all the, the social media noise out there. Yeah. So you got all the influencers who have their own special training programs that don't have a two brain cells to run together when it comes to training. Well, they've know. never trained anybody. Well, they've yeah. Never trained anybody. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, but they got, you know, they've, they've got hashtag dedication. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. they do. And they look good. And most of the time they look good because they're on drugs. And right, that's, exactly. the, that's the thing that really infuriates me. I've got to get somebody on here at some point to actually talk through steroid, who actually knows what they're talking about when it comes to drugs and the whole nine yards. But, um, you know, I, I want somebody who's been on 
right. steroid SARMs and all that stuff to come like, um, you know, like John Meadows. I love, I love the guys that are willing to admit they do this and then, but also have a clue about training. Right. If you don't admit that you do this and you don't have a clue about training, you are lying to people. Right. Um, and so I, I like, you can't win on Instagram with that kind of crap, but, uh, people, people try to play people all the time. It's, it's infuriating. I found yeah. out, um, recently that, um, there's a thing called a cement inje butt injections. It's literally like, I don't know if it's concrete or some compound that women will literally inject into their rear ends. Wow. And that's the reason why every fitness booty model looks like they do. That so, sounds awful. That was a new one. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, what I was going to ask you about uh, gym crafters is um, uh, let's just talk equipment for a little bit since that's sure. what you do. Yeah. Um, do you have a, I, I know every, every individual has their own preferences of that kind of thing, but um, uh, I'll just start with your gym. Do you have a favorite bar that you're using currently? So I use, um, because of the way I approach reviews, I've used some other bars just because I wanted to use them for eight, 10, 12 months so that I could give an honest, fair assessment. You'll see some of those reviews coming out on the YouTube channel soon. Right. Um, but right now I use the rep stainless steel power bar version okay. two. Um, I love that bar. The, the, to me, the feel of stainless steel, um, a, I'm lazy, so I don't want to maintenance my bars all that often. Amen. Um, I just did a video that'll be coming out in the not too distant future of what happens to your bar when you don't take care of it for a year. Uh... So I've got a, a Grizzly power bar from American Barbell, which used to be my primary bar Yeah. Um, that I didn't, it was hard chrome, so it didn't get too bad, but mm -hmm. it definitely rusted and corroded and, and whatnot. So um, but I like not having to worry about the the finish, but the feel to me of all of, you know, bare steel or stainless steel to me just feel the best in my hand. And uh, even Cerakote, which is, you know, as durable as those, it just, there's a weird feel to it. You know, you just don't, I don't feel yeah. as happy for the bar. So um, I, I love that. I love that bar. And I think for the price, it's under 400 bucks. Nice. Um, more than I thought I would spend on a bar when I first built my gym. But, you know, if, if the goal is to buy only one bar that's going to last you, I, I think that's a great choice. I think it's a, just a fantastic bar. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, most people only need one to two bars anyway. Um, like me and my wife lift. And so she's got a smaller bar, but even she could have used the 45 pound bar if she really wanted to. You're um, using the Kabuki bar, you said? Yeah, the Kabuki bar. I've actually also got a strain core is um, they're starting to get more notoriety. Do you, are you familiar with that brand? Not, no, no. Uh, I actually know the owner. Um, he runs Carolina Fitness Equipment here in Charlotte. Strengthcore has been compared at times to Rogue, which is fascinating to me because okay. they're actually Chinese uh, based, but it, it, the quality control on the stuff is actually really good. I use it for bench. It's got a fairly passive neural, but I like the fact that it's cheap and it spins and it works. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine with, with whatever, honestly. Um, when people are putting their home gyms together and uh, I was talking with, oh, uh, sorry, before we move on from bars, have you heard of phosphate coating? I have. Have you ever used it before? I have not. That's what this bar is. Um, okay. I was talking with Garage Gym Fanatics and, uh, and he, he mentioned that that coating feels, I, I couldn't figure out why this was. It's almost like it sticks to your okay. hand. And I was really hoping somebody would come out with, after I thought about it, I was like, this would be amazing if they combine it with like um, volcano neural. Can you imagine mm -hmm. like yeah. that plus? So anyway, it, I think that's a new um, coating that they're developing and I've oh, only cool. seen it on the Chinese bar. So I, you know, I don't know anything about it. How's it holding up? Does it wear off at all or? Um, it's a little, I mean, obviously on the, on the, on the corners there where it's touching up against plastic or whatever it's going to wear a little bit yeah. um it's not the best i mean i would compare it to let me think it's probably a little less durable than black oxide coating honestly um okay. and it's it's fine but I, i'm 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 curious as to whether it's going to become more popular i haven't seen any reviews about any bars that have a phosphate coating yet so i'll be curious but i, I think it's real new ish so um, there's a lot of new stuff out there yeah there really is here. It's crazy. And, and, and new stuff comes out every, every, oh, that, that was another thing is like tonal and the electronic and digital mediums and the classes and stuff. I mean, they're taking off like crate Peloton 
Um, people love the compactness. Uh, Coop just did a review on the tonal mirror. Yep. Um, and the fact that you can substitute that for all of your workouts is, is pretty nifty. I'm still a barbell guy and I probably yep. will be till I die, but man, have you, have you been ever been able to use any of that stuff or is that kind of so like- We sell the mirror where I work. Oh, cool. That's, that's interesting. Now that, you know, that, that has, that, that's not the same thing as the tonal. So that's, that's more of a, from what I've seen, it's more of a body weight type of a thing. And then we also sell um, the Nordic track stuff. So that's got the eye fit um, yeah. in there. So the, the instructor led type workouts, um, you know, Peloton's real popular because you can do live classes, but yeah. Um, so yeah, people seem to seem to gravitate towards that. My girlfriend just bought the, some type of weird fitness game for the switch. Ooh. So it's got these, this ring and this little leg strap and you put no your way. in there and then it, you have to do body weight movements to get through the course. I haven't seen it. She just bought it yesterday. That's but cool. I think that, you know, I have my preferences of things, but for me, whatever you're going to use, man, if you're, you can find something that you use consistently, you know, consistency wins out over the type of equipment all day long. So yeah. if people buy the mirror and whether it's the $2,000 investment or whether it's the, you know, the fact that there's somebody like up on the screen, whatever it is, if that, if that gets some training every day, that's awesome. I mean, I think those things are great. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the, the technology that somebody was saying that they, they might consider at some point putting technology into um, even the rack systems, because if you can measure bar speed, for example, I mean, mm -hmm. that would be fantastic. You could really get close. To, I'm, I'm a big barbell medicine fan. And okay. um, yeah, yeah. So their, their programming is starting to migrate more into, they've got the uh, rate of perceived effort, but the, at some point, I think they're going to want to start measuring bar speed as a determiner of whether or not you're actually close to max or not. Okay. And they've got systems out there. I'm sure you've seen them where you can do that. You strap a little piece to your bar and it goes up and down and measures yeah. bar speed, but they're expensive. They're like $5,000. Yeah, that's crazy. And yeah, I'm not about to get one of those. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> so I'm sure they'll have one that's strapped to your phone for five bucks made in China. I'm sure point. they will, right? <laughs> um, as far as constructing a home gym generally, and I'm sure you've got guides about this, but I'll, I'll just ask you, I mean, do you have a philosophy on, it, it's unique to somebody's training style, but um, are, you, are you just a big fan of like, just go out there, get started, doesn't really matter. Or do you have some sort of a formula as to how to get started if you don't really know? Yeah, actually, I put a lot of thought into this. And, and I think that a lot of people that I talk to, they let, you know, there's a saying, don't let perfect be the enemy of done. Awesome. And, and I think they see, and I was in this camp, like I watched, Bre you know, Brandon's basement, you know, was just inspiring to me. Yeah. And I'm like, I want that. Right. <laughs> and, you know, when you add it all up, you're like, I can't have that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, um, I think that people see that and they're like, well, I can't build this big fancy home gym. So I'm just not going to do anything. Right. I think the pandemic is a great example. Well, I can't go train at a, at a full gym, so I'm just not going to do anything. And it's like, well, get down and do some pushups. You know, you don't have to have anything. You can just do, you can do a lot with very little. So for me, um, like I said, consistency is a big thing. And I think that people, they jump in with both feet and they build this big gym and they're not even sure they're going to train every day. And, and for me, I like to see people build the habit of training before they spend a ton of money on equipment. So my recommendation is a couple of things. For me, I started with a single kettlebell and a Pavel Tetsulian book. And I would move my coffee table and I would just train on the floor and we would do, I would do Turkish get-ups and swings every day. And that's, that's what I would do until I hurt myself. Um, <laughs> but uh, so that's a great place to start. A, kettle, a single kettlebell or two kettlebells if you want, if you want one for cleans and, and, and get-ups and then one for swings. You can get into that for under a hundred bucks. Um, you don't need a dedicated area in your house. You just need a clear spot on your floor. So that's a great place to start. Another really solid place to start is to get yourself a door mounted pull-up bar and a set of Olympic rings. With those two things, you can do, a, and I like rings better than I like um, the TRX. Is the TRX, they, they attach at a single point. Yeah. You can't do things above the, like to do push-ups and things they're, they're rubbing on your arms. Yep. You can't do dips on them. There's a lot of things you can't do on the TRX and they're literally five times as expensive as a set of rings. Yeah, it's insane. So, you know, you can pick up a set of rings on Amazon for $22 or something like that. And when you combine that with a, a door mounted pull-up bar, 
you can, you can A, you can vary the amount of resistance to fit your fitness level. I mean, you can do push-ups almost standing up if you need to, you know, if that's where your starting point is. And if you're me with that 95 pounds on the bar with a three rep max, I can't, you know, ring push-ups are hard. Yeah. You can't do, you know, full on. So that's a great place to start. And I think starting there and building the habit of training does a couple of things. Number one, it, it builds the, the daily discipline, which, you know, motivation is mostly useless. It's, it's discipline. It's the daily discipline of this is just something that I do as a, as a matter of course, in my day, I take a little bit of time and I work on my body every day. Um, and that really helps people do that without investing a ton of money. It also helps you figure out what type of training you might like. I don't like body weight training. That, that's what I learned with those rings. It's, it's not for me. I don't enjoy it. Um, I, I like kettlebell training, but I found out that I liked resistance training better. So I progressed from those two things. I bought a, a cheap body solid adjustable bench that would fold down flat and go under my bed when it wasn't, you know, when I wasn't using it. Nice. And I bought a, I bought my power blocks. And at the time, I think I bought the 50 pound set. The nice thing about power blocks is you can buy additional weight to add to them. You're not right. set with it. So I bought those and I started just doing dumbbell training and I started doing, you know, I can't do heavy squats. So we'll do rear foot elevated split squats, which are brutal. Um, you know, way bigger pump on your quads with those than you'll ever get with a regular back barbell back squat. Oh yeah. But um, so I started doing that and I realized, well, I enjoy weight training. That's what I enjoy. So, you know, one of the big game changers for me was, um, I don't know if you listen to the mind pump podcast. No, I haven't. These guys are great. Um, really good information on like some honest information on steroids there too. Like oh, one nice. Most that was a steroid user, was a, was a competitive right. bodybuilder. Yeah. Okay. Um, they had some really good interviews with, I forget, the, they just had somebody on recently who talked really openly about steroids. Um, nice. But one of their philosophies is that it's not a 90 day program. Like, I think a lot of people, myself included, they look at things and they're like, well, I'm going to train for 90 days. And I'm going to get, I'm going to get fit. And then I don't need to train anymore. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to go on a diet. I'm going to lose 30 pounds. And then I can go back to eating how I was before. Like, no, it's a, it's a, it's a daily thing, right? You've got to enjoy doing it. So for me, one of the game changers was, you know, one of their philosophies is don't look at training as a goal. Don't like, I want to be able to bench 250 one day, or I want to be able to squat 350 one day. Look at it as I just want to get good at squatting. Like mm -hmm. I want to practice the skill. And for me, that's where I actually went from. I don't like working out to, I love training because I was, I wasn't just trying to get through a workout anymore. I was trying to get good at a skill. That's, that's why I went to see Dr. Russell. I wanted to know how to squat and yeah. I didn't realize there was so much to it, but getting good at that movement, getting good at a deadlift, getting good at a bench press that to me, that there's, there's a lot of enjoyment in that. And, and that's what got me kind of lit up. I could very well have found the same thing about bodyweight training. Like, Hey, I want to get good at a human flag. I want to get good at, at planche pushups, you know, that could have. So I think when people start building their gym, if you start small, it allows you to find the thing that you like. And again, it's the thing that you like, like, I hate P90X. I, I wish that whole company would go away, but <laughs> there's a lot of people where that program changed their life because yep. that's the one they stuck with and they enjoyed it. So, Hey, that's for you. So before you build a whole squat rack and wall of barbell, make sure you like that first. And then once you figure out what you like and what you'll stick with, and you built that habit, I think that can guide where you go. Now, if you get into weight training, um, I, I think it's for me, I'd start with the dumbbells and a bench, mm -hmm. start there. And then I would get yourself some plates and a bar and a landmine. Like, don't worry about a rack up front, right? You can do so much stuff with just plates, a bar and a landmine. Oh yeah. Um, you may not, you may even find that you don't need a rack, you know, yeah. there's only a few things you need a rack for. Um, but uh, that, that's kind of, again, I'm, I talk a lot, so that's my no, that's great. Like, long winded answer to your question of kind of where people, where people should start. Um, and and I, I think that you, if you do it that way, you'll find that you build some good habits and you end up with things that you, you're happy to have spent the money on. Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. Um, when, how long has uh, Jim Crafter, the website actually been around? 
So we're coming up on three-ish years nice. of doing this, a little okay. bit, two and a half, three years or so. Um, the pandemic obviously helped as far yeah. as traffic levels go. Mm -hmm. um, I finally just, I finally gotten over some of my hesitations about YouTube and I've started actually just this week, started posting on YouTube again. Nice. Um, you know, I, I fell victim to those, the saying, never compare your beginning to somebody else's end. Yeah. And I would always look at, you know, you know, Coop's hired a, an editor and a, mm -hmm. and a videographer. Mm -hmm. um, the guy over at Garage Gym Lab, his editing is so tight. It's fantastic. It's so good. Yeah. You know, his, his visual aesthetic of his website and his, his YouTube channel is just, just like, I can't, I don't know how to do that. So I, I, <laughs> I just didn't for a while. Mm -hmm. And so I had to sit down and go, well, what can you do? So yeah. that's kind of, I've started this. So we've started up the, the YouTube channel and, and I'm at a, an interesting place in that, that I, I'm probably going to go full time with it here in the not too distant future. Oh, nice. Which is a tough decision because I've worked at my day job for 19 years yeah, and it's a really good job. So I bet. It's, where are you uh, working currently? Out of curiosity, so I work at a I work at a place called Apt Electronics. Okay, um, it's, a, it's the largest single store electronics store appliance store in the country, and we sell everything from fitness equipment to car audio to oh, wow. to uh, appliances to electronics. And I've, I've been in the retail electronics industry for thirty years now. Dang. Um, so I know it really well. Uh, I manage our, our phone, internet, and corporate sales group. So I've got about 52 people on my team. Nice. Um, we do a, a, an obscene amount of sales every year. So <laughs> I bet. It's, it's a good paying job. I'm good at it. I've been there a long time. The, the company is, we're constantly rated one of the top five places in Chicago to work. Wow. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a great place. But I, I find myself in a position where I now make as much money on Jim Crafter as I do on that. Wow. And, and I enjoy, I en not that I don't like helping people spend their money on TVs. Yeah. But I, I find more fulfillment in what I'm doing now with Jim Crafter. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and I do some other online stuff too. I, this isn't my only website. In okay. Things. I have a couple of others of other web properties that I, that I work on. I enjoy writing. I enjoy teaching. Um, training is a big part of my day job and that translates really well to to the YouTube and the and yeah the, so I'm at a crossroads right now we'll, we'll see what happens but it's uh it's an interesting time for sure that's amazing yeah I mean if you can get that, that was uh, I actually used to work in financial services and I was a product manager and we when the pandemic hit we started selling all of that equipment out of the back of our yard and I essentially replaced my income with the gym equipment that we were selling and then I found out oh yeah there's like bunch of other people who do this full time and they've been doing yep. it successfully for years. So it's, it's taken a leap of faith a little bit, but also there's a proven business model out there with all the other review sites. I mean, the fact that you're even pulling in enough to replace your current income is a huge testament to like what you've been able to do even part-time, I think. Um, the fact that you can, you can have a sustainable business model like that. Is it mostly coming from the affiliate sales or are you, are you actually, do you have your own product line or anything like that? So no products um, at this point. Um, I think that's a you know that's something that may be down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, I think more for for my future plans. I've got some online courses planned. Um, I've got some uh, digital products planned. My my big thing is is it going to be helpful to people? I don't want to yeah. put something out just. That's another thing that held me back on YouTube for a while. Was like. I could make videos, but are people a going to watch them and b are they actually going to help anybody do anything? Yeah. So there, there's some plans on the road, but diversification of income streams is something that's that's big on my mind right now, which mm -hmm. is another reason I'm kind of pushing on the YouTube. You know, the more different ways that can have revenue coming in, the the better I'll feel about making a move if I do do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but no, no products, no, you know, I'm not trying to start a t-shirt company and yeah. not, you know, it seems, <laughs> seems to be the thing to do. Um, I really just, you know, I, I've always believed that if you, if you add enough value to people's lives that, you know, eventually they'll trade you some of their money for that. So I'm hoping that that, that, that business model works. Um, but yeah, so, so we'll see, but it, it, to answer your question, you know, there's affiliate marketing, there's advertising, there's, mm -hmm. there's the YouTube income, there's, um, a few different ways that that content marketing can can bring in income so and i'm trying to do it without what we talked about earlier of right. writing too many here's the 10 best 
you know, things that make me the most money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't want to do that. So yeah, that's honest and fair. And that's, I think uh, it's, again, it's what's missing from a, a lot of these just generic websites that are, that's all they're seeking to do. So that's yeah. awesome. Um, let's see. I wanted to ask you, there's a question I wanted to ask you totally slipped my mind. Um, I need to have a pen and paper here to write down some of that stuff. Um, so people can find, Oh, are you on, okay. You're on YouTube. Oh, where can people find you? So you're on YouTube. You're at the gym craft. Is it gymcrafters.com? It's gymcrafter.com. Gymcrafter so, um, yeah, gymcrafter.com. And then, uh, uh, on YouTube, which is just gymcrafter. Uh, I don't do anything else yet i do for one of my other web properties i'm a big disc golfer i play yeah. a lot of disc golf and that that's what i've done online most i've got a pretty big following on my disc golf instagram page awesome um but uh i haven't started anything for gym crafter yet because i don't want to do something again i don't want to do something that doesn't bring value i don't want to yeah. do something that's just well you should have it in I, I don't necessarily buy into, well, you just should have a TikTok and an Instagram and a Facebook and a, mm -hmm. a, a whatever else is out there. Um, I, I'm a big fan of pick one platform. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that a lot of the most, you know, unlike what Gary Vee says, um, a lot of the most successful people out there, they've picked a platform, whether that's mm -hmm. Facebook or Pinterest or, or, or Instagram, and they've just made that one platform great. And I think that that's, you know, if I go full time with this, that's when, because I'm a, I'm a photographer on the side too. So nice. I've got some strong ideas of what would make a great Instagram page. I just don't have the time to do it right right now. Yeah. So it's yeah. that's so, so no, again, I take, I talk too much. Oh, no, you're <laughs> fine. Very long answer to know I only don't have any other <laughs> social media pages. No, that works. So people should check out, check out the, uh, the reviews both on the, uh, the website as well as the, the YouTube page. And, um, I guess that we're going to be creating an article here soon about the top uh, garage, garage gym websites, home gym websites um, that are doing these kind of reviews. And uh, we're going to have badges and things that we distribute to people. I don't want to do a top 10 because I hate, um, I don't like rank. I don't want to rank people and make people feel bad. And, uh, oh, you're number 10 compared to the number one guy the previous right. year. Plus, I don't have any metrics to base it off of. Right. Like, what the freaking do? Like, this guy's bigger than the other guy. Who cares? They're all helping the community. So I won't be doing something like that. But I do want people to know where they can find genuine, honest, and reliable, high-quality reviews. And uh, so when I came across yours, I was like, I got, I definitely got to talk to this guy. And Shoot, you have confirmed. And people out there honestly there's not actually a lot of reviews on my site you'll see you'll see some reviews coming on youtube and i'm actually in the middle of writing some reviews for the site because i figured it's time to actually at least put some of those out there yeah um but most of the site is about how to go about building a home gym just the actual how to pick a barbell how to pick a bench how to pick out the right flooring what kind of lighting should you use you know what types of plates should you get what types of accessories are you know really helping people think through what they should spend their money on i'd rather teach people instead of saying go buy this bench which i definitely yeah. have that too i have a recommended sure. gear page with the things i recommend i'd rather teach people that here's the five things you want in a good weight bench mm -hmm. which oh by the way eliminates all of the benches on amazon but <laughs> um, yeah. here's what to look for and that this way you won't waste your money because again like we talked about you you can't go try this stuff right most people can't go and try out six benches to see which, and even if you can, when you're going to go sit on it at a store, you're not going to lift with it or train with it. Right. So that, that's really the crux of it. The YouTube channel, I think is going to be more, um, we do, we're going to be doing a feature called five minute Fridays. The first one launched today, which are just quick tips on how yeah. to get the most out of your gym, but they're not equipment reviews. Okay. And then I've got some reviews. I've done some bench reviews. We launched one on Monday and I've got some more coming up. So I'm going to try and do stuff that's well suited for each platform mm -hmm. and, and, and do it that way. But, you know, it, it, honestly, again, comparing myself to others, if, if you want reviews, Garage Gym Lab is killing it. Their reviews oh, yeah. are just, they're so thorough and so informative and, and so well laid out and visually appealing. I just... It's uh, it's uh, inspiring and, and a little bit intimidating at the same time. Sure. Well, you've got, I mean, you've got the well-rounded aspect where you're not only talking about equipment, but how to use the equipment and the, the things to look for. So I, I think all of that's valuable to the home gym community because people need some place to start. And that's a really good place to start when you're thinking about this process. Because right. like you said, a new lifter is not going to know the difference between a 28 and a 29 millimeter bar. 
much less even be able to feel the difference starting out. So, you know, that kind of thing is, is extremely, extremely valuable. So that's awesome. Keep it up. Um, well, Tim, I'm, I'm going to wrap us up there, but thank you so much for being willing to come on. Um, it was yeah, awesome talking to you. Um, cool. We'll definitely have to have you back on. And uh, I appreciate you do, doing the whole gym tour and uh, speaking to us about the website and how you got started. Yeah, absolutely, man. Anytime. I'm happy happy to, to share the stuff. If you've got any more questions, let me know. I'd be happy to come back on anytime you want. And good luck. I, like I said, I, yeah. I mentioned to you, I listened to all your episodes before I came on and it's definitely enjoyable. I like the approach that you're taking and and the, the more broad spectrum approach to just living healthy and being active. And, and uh, you know, folks like you are, are people who, you know, I'm going to make a decision here coming forward. It's, it's nice to see people like yourself who are really just kind of taking the plunge and jumped in and, and done your own thing. And it's nice to see you succeeding. So, so uh, if I can help you, you know, help promote you at all, let me know. I really appreciate it, Tim. Thank you so much. You bet, man. Talk to you soon. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. Please give Freedom Cast a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. It would mean a lot, a lot, a lot to our business. Plus, it's fun to read y'all's reviews. See you next time.